What's going on, everyone? We're nearing the end of the year, and Victoria's housing market is slowing down, and some segments are even grinding to a complete halt. The downtown condo market is being dragged down by all the new short-term rental listings uh, that have come up in the past month or so, and even rental prices are starting to weaken for the first time in years, which is absolutely crazy uh, because we haven't seen a rental price slowdown in over a decade, in fact. We're seeing some big price drops and low-ball offers being accepted, is this the start of a major downshift or is it just a seasonal slowdown? Keep in mind, it is the end of the year here. Uh, as we approach the holidays, not a lot of people are renting or buying or making any kind of moves. Uh, the buyers are still out there, of course, but for the most part, they're not making moves right now. And it looks like they're hibernating until the new year. Even with prices cooling off, high interest rates still mean many homes are unaffordable to buyers. And those who can buy and have cash, uh, such as investors, are patiently waiting and the general consensus seems to be that prices will either stay the same, they might come down further, but it all depends what happens with interest rates next year. If you're selling your home right now, there's absolutely zero room to overprice your listing. Uh, buyers won't even book a showing if the price is off the mark. In this market update, since it's the end of the year, I wanna try something new and give you a quick breakdown of how each neighborhood in Victoria has performed over the past 12 months. The worst performing neighborhood was actually a huge surprise to me. That's all coming up at the end of the video. Right now, let's dig into the numbers a bit and try and make some sense of what's happening out there. Let's start off by looking at one of the stats that I think is most relevant if you're a buyer right now, and that is the list price versus the sold price ratios. So in the green here, you can see the original price or what the sellers are asking, and the blue line shows where things are actually selling. So back in 2021, uh, back at the peak, when we had multiple offers and the market was really crazy, uh, we can see that things were selling over asking price. Early 2022, uh, it switched up again and things were going maybe 10, 15% uh, under ask in some cases, uh, but sellers were still just asking too much. They hadn't caught up back to reality. And you can see that things are a little bit more normalized now. Sellers have lowered their expect expectations a bit. And right now we're about 5% under ask. So on an average home in Victoria, um, if you, for example, if you're putting an offer on a home that's listed for a million dollars, you could expect to pay about $950,000. Keep in mind, there's no hard and fast rules here. Uh, lots of exceptions and different uh, segments and neighborhoods, uh, which we'll look at in a moment. Uh, but generally, homes in Victoria right now are selling for about 5% under asking price. There were less than 400 sales last month in November, and it's typical to be slow this time of year and it's on par from last year. Uh, but to put that in context, during the peak and a much hotter market, such as uh, November 2020, we had 800 sales, and November 2021, 630 sales. So not a lot of volume out there, and we're seeing a days on market of uh, properties increase as well. Inventory is way up. Uh, we ended November with the most inventory in the last eight years, almost 2,400 active listings. Again, to give you some context, uh, this is more than this time last year with 2,100 listings and a big increase from the peak in 2021 with only 958 listings. What's uh, really interesting is if you go back to 2013, we had over 3,800 listings. With a slow market now, we don't have nearly the amount of selection we had 10 years ago uh, when our population was lower as well and immigration to Victoria was also lower. And this is really why uh, affordability is such a hot issue and problem right now in Victoria. Uh, we just don't have enough homes for sale. It's as simple as that. And our population is uh, growing quite a bit faster than it used to as well. Medium prices are down 3.4% for single family detached homes. Uh, they took a big hit in October and have never recovered. They're still up from this time last year, but only about 10% overall now. According to Leo at House Hunt Victoria, we have the most single family homes listed under $1 million since 2019. So what's still moving? Uh, we're seeing a lot of single family detached homes on large lots selling to developers for Vancouver with the province's mandate to allow as much upzoning as possible. Uh, these projects make a lot of sense now. They're all great holding properties and they'll only become more and more rare over time. Condos are down 3.2% for the month and down about the same uh, since this time last year. And in particular, and not a big surprise here, short-term rental condos uh, are way down, only four sales in the last six weeks. And reselling of new construction and pre-sales is also essentially dead right now. 
tons of new listings at the Dockside Green and the Pearl and other developments uh, downtown, uh, which is all dragging down the condo market in general. Townhome prices have increased up over 13%. Townhome numbers are always a bit misleading since there's actually only so few townhomes out there. This only represents 48 sales in this case. Townhomes are the true missing middle in Victoria, and I think there's always going to be a good market for them. Taking a look at the region as a whole over the last year, the COVID trend continues of buyers wanting rural properties, and Central Saanich and the Highlands have seen the highest price gains. Saanich has performed extremely well. Uh, in particular, the Light Ritz, uh, Mount Tomy, and Cedar Hill areas, uh, they have the absolute biggest gains of any neighborhoods in Victoria. Uh, the weakest performing municipalities have been Langford and the Gulf Islands. In particular, Salt Spring and Main Island. Looking at Langford, uh, the Florence Lake area has taken some of the biggest price drops. Oak Bay is also cooling off. If we look at individual neighborhoods, downtown takes the top prize, down over 4%. The downtown and Langford numbers likely go back to all the uh, pre-sales that have come online and the softening condo market. That's where the most density is and that's where the most condo buildings are. So it makes sense that we're seeing the biggest drops in those areas. It's a bit surprising to me to see the Gulf Islands uh, dropping in price so much. So it's contrary to other rural and work from home areas that seem to be retaining their values. Uh, it's also one of the few uh, places left in BC that you can own a second home uh, because it's exempt from speculation tax. So I thought that would help uh, retain the value there. Uh, but it looks like people are just not buying and prices are coming down, uh, in particular on uh, Salt Spring Island. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe and leave a comment below with your experiences and thoughts about Victoria's real estate market. Uh, please also stay tuned for my next video where I'm going to make some predictions about 2024 and where things could be headed. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.